Hey, big sister. What's your least favorite show? That gets my goat. That's what she said. He said to you, not to me. So there. Hi, everybody. Welcome to That Gets My Goat. This is Big Anklevich. Mm. This is Rich Outfield. That's right. And we're here for a very special episode of Blossom. Uh, this is our Superman v. Batman, Dawn of Justice. How can you even say that? <laughs> episode. What a mouthful, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but tell me, tell tell the listener, specifically one listener, why that we're doing this episode. Um, we're doing this episode because you demanded it. Some people wanted to know our opinion on Superman versus Batman. You know our opinion. <laughs> why? Why? Why would you bug us about this? Do you have the emails that this guy sent you? Now, luckily, I wasn't privy to this email thing, and luckily. Privy to me is a, an outhouse. I, I luckily I didn't get to see you all these on, emails that he sent you. You were on the privy while I was looking at the emails, though. There you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you just briefly summarize. Oh, there was just somebody who wanted to uh, hear our episode about Superman versus Batman, and but I. But he'd never listened to the show. <laughs> he, I ever, think, he was a newcomer to the show, and he's like, I oh. think he may have missed uh, what year was it? 2014. That you went pretty much a year straight, yeah, <laughs> without being able to get through an episode without complaining about Man of Steel. Well, tell me about these emails that you got from him, because I, yeah, he he was smart enough not to bother me with those emails. <laughs> well, yeah, he just wanted to hear what our opinion was, and I was just like, I, I don't think that we're gonna go and see that. And he's like, Oh, come on, please, I'll, I'll buy you your popcorn. And I was, and I, you know got back to him saying well I, I we weren't really big fans of man of steel so and we, you know it's you know once you once you've been burned once once bitten twice shy there you go fool me once shame, shame on, on you. you fool me twice shame on me i'm sure there's more well, who is sayings. the greater fool the fool or the fool who follows it and yeah. see that's never made any sense to me either Okay, go ahead. But, <laughs> and he's like, oh, no, please, I'll buy your tickets and your popcorn. And then I was like, oh, I don't know. And he's like, I'll buy your tickets and your popcorn and a pound of candy and sodas. So, you know, at this point, I'm like, okay, it may be worth it just for all the uh, concessions that we're going to get here. So <laughs> I brought nice. this up to Rish, and he said, all right, we're going to have to do an episode about this, about Superman versus Batman. Now. Did I say this? It seems like you said... Dude, we're going to have to do an episode about <laughs> Superman v. Batman. All right, so I really wanted the candy, I'll, I'll admit. <laughs> this guy's a man after our own heart. And I have to admit, I would rather hear about emails like that than I got an email just the other day. It was like, hey, I just discovered your show and I've started listening to it from the very beginning. I always skip the part after the story, but I, I really like your show. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, thanks, man. <laughs> See, um, is there a way to block? <laughs> So I would rather hear about your friend who really wants to hear what we think about the movie than my friend who likes the first 10 minutes of our show. Boy, that guy's going to get really pissed when he gets further into the show and, and it starts getting to the point where we like have the really long skits before the sh show even starts. We have like, would you like to build a snowman song? And <laughs> <laughs> um, But speaking of skits... I cannot recommend enough the uh, fake Sean Connery v. Superman uh, <laughs> Dawn of Bromance episode, uh, which, A, says all that I need to say about this movie, and two, had more passion and creativity put into it than if we spoke for two hours about the movie, or anybody else speaking for two hours about the movie. Uh, sorry, continue. Please. So yeah. So so we're doing this episode now about Superman v Batman. Um, I don't think we can go any farther without admitting that we haven't seen the show. We didn't see the show. I'm sorry. I didn't take him up on his offer for the candy and popcorn and sodas. Um, not that I'm not going to eat candy, popcorn, and sodas anyway, but I guess I'm just going to have to buy it myself. Because I can't, uh, I, I just can't 
pay the price <laughs> that I have to pay. You see, I appreciate that there are people that are passionate, and I appreciate that there are people who think that that would be fun to hear. You know, like when we went and saw Battleship, I would never have seen Battleship had those people not paid for us to see Battleship. And we saw it in the, the seat. You know, if the, <laughs> the seats are a-rockin', don't come a-knockin'. And, D-box. And I will never see a movie like that again. <laughs> but I had the experience because of generous listeners to the show. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And, and besides, Battleship wasn't nearly as bad as some of these other movies that I have paid for myself. <laughs> Man of Steel. But the thing with us as creative people and as human beings and then having our forum is, you know, we got to have some kind of integrity. And I've said on multiple occasions, I will not see any follow-up to Man of Steel for the exact same reason that you stated. Fool me once, shame on you. But if you fool me a second time, it's my own damn fault. I said I wouldn't see it. And then when they announced, hey, Batman's going to be in this, I was like, oh, jeez. But I, I, I said I wouldn't see it. And then they announced Ben Affleck would be playing Batman. <gasps> oh, and you were like, oh. dawn of bromance. And my nipples are hard. But I said I wouldn't see it. You know what I mean? And there was all this buzz and all these people getting so excited. And Wonder Woman's going to be in it. And something that masquerading as Aquaman is going to be in it. And, oh, there's going to be a Flash <laughs> reference. And, you know, it's just like uh, Lex Luthor will have created Facebook. And all sorts of just amazing stuff is going to be, go, go see it, guys. But I said that I wouldn't see it. Vehemently said I wouldn't see it. And if I do go see it, what, what does that make me? You know what I mean? And so I refused to see it. And people would ask me. And I was like, oh, hey, did you see the movie? I said, no, I'm never going to see the movie. And they're like, oh, well, I envy you. And <laughs> the, the reviews started coming out. And the buzz started coming out before it even came out that, hey, guys, there's something wrong. There's something rotten in the state of Gotham. and Slash Metropolis. Yes. Because they're true. right across the river, apparently, in this. And... Uh, yeah, that's something that we can talk about in this episode. Because, I, yeah, you know what schadenfreude is, right? And that's, that's... When, when you get joy at the suffering of others. And I don't know exactly if this is schadenfreude, but I started to feel delight when I heard how bad it was and when I heard people say, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then you saw sad Batman and you felt bad for feeling so good. Well, okay, yeah, and that's basically what we're going to talk about in this episode. We can leave that for the end of the episode if you want, because I'm curious what your feelings were, because well, I've got three questions for you, and you can spend the next five minutes answering them. A, did you hate Man of Steel as much as I did? Two, do you love Batman and Superman as much as I do? And three, were you ever tempted to go see the movie without me? So those are your three <laughs> questions. Uh, okay. <clears throat> First one was an A, or was it a one? And then the second first, one was B. First one was A. One. Okay, one. A. Who cares? A? I, I'm not good at math, guys. <laughs> okay, A. Oh, now I've forgotten what the question was. Did, did, did I hate it as much as you? I don't know if that's possible. Because I think you hated Man of Steel to the level that rises to, like, infinity, where you can't, you can't count that high, you know what I'm saying? It's... It's a it's an imaginary concept of a number uh, when it comes down to it. I did hate it a, a lot. I compare this uh, series, Man of Steel plus Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Um, <laughs> I compare this to the Transformers series uh, because I loved Transformers when I was a kid. And when I heard they were making a live action movie, I thought that's going to be f***ing awesome. Hey, hey, Marshall, you might want to ask your children to leave the room. Just just letting you know. Um, and then when it came around, I mean, I didn't really know much about Michael Bay at the time. Uh, I couldn't have told you anything else that he'd done. He became much more famous, I think, since then because of the Transformers. But he'd already done a lot of big movies. He was already a big deal. I didn't realize this at the time, but I went and saw the movie with my son, who also liked Transformers a lot, and oh my gosh, it was 
just painful. It was just terrible. It was so bad that I was just, I was upset. I was physically, uh, uh, you know, I would get sick to my stomach probably over how, well, okay, that's maybe an exaggeration. But, uh, Motion sick, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you would get that from those movies. Oh, my gosh. But, um, yeah, I was just really frustrated because it was a property that mean, meant a lot to me, you know. This was something really special and dear to my heart. When I was a kid, like, I saw the uh, the real Transformers, the movie, and, you know, Optimus Prime and his heroic demise in that movie was just gut-wrenching compared to anything that happened in the, in the Michael Bay movie. And I was just so unbelievably upset at how poorly done that Transformers movie was. And I vowed right then and there, I will not see. They announced a sequel not too long after that, and I was like, I'm not going to see that. There's no way I'm going to see that. And I fooled me once. I used that quote dozens and dozens of times to people about why I would never see that. And they came out, and they made a jillion dollars, and they made a third one, and they made a fourth one, and every one, and they made billions around the world. And it might as well be Harry Potter for how uh, much money they made off of these things. And I, cu I couldn't understand it at all. I mean, people just kept going to them. Even though they knew they were bad, they would talk about how bad they were and they'd get terrible scores on Rotten Tomatoes and everything, but people still went to them, still went to the third and the fourth one and didn't make any sense to me, but I was not going to fall into that. I wasn't going to be like, yeah, well, I love Transformers, so I have to go and see another crappy version of it. So I never did, never saw a single one of them, have no idea really what they're about. I mean, I have seen trailers. Uh, for some of them, just because I was a captive audience and I was unable to click away. But yeah, I, I never, never went down that road again. And Superman, Man of Steel was similar to Transformers to me. It was, Superman is someone that I've loved since I was a little kid. I, you know, that 1978 film, uh was a still I mean I was really young when 1978 happened but for years after that it was still a phenomenon I remember seeing you know from the sequels I suppose and so forth seeing them on TV seeing Christopher Reeve being interviewed on talk shows and you know them doing goofy stuff where they put them up on like a a chair and show you how they did the flying stuff with a green with a you know a blue screen and all that kind of stuff. And I love Superman. And I was smart enough to have never seen Superman 3 or 4 until uh, just a few years ago. Although, that was only Superman 3. I've still have never seen Superman 4. <laughs> just because I've been warned off. Um, but yeah, when this Man of Steel come, came out, it it just... It wasn't Superman, and so I couldn't be convinced to to go and see a sequel to it. And a lot of people said, oh yeah, maybe they'll change it. Maybe Superman will be more relatable now in this sequel or or something, but that's not what I heard has happened. I've heard they basically just doubled down on that. They're like, yeah, Superman is an asshole. He's twice as much of an asshole this time. He's the worst asshole ever, and everybody loves him. They worship him because he's an asshole. Because that's what this world loves is assholes. I don't know. I, I don't know what the deal is with this movie. And I don't really care. I know it's bad. It got almost as bad a score as friggin' Fantastic Four did last year. So there's no need to see it. I'd sooner watch Catwoman. It's just, it's, it's unnecessary. And I'm, and I'm not going to put myself through it. I'm not going to see characters that I love dragged through the Zack Snyder mud. Because it's just not necessary. Did I answer all the questions? That was question one. I think you did. One. No, that, that was What fine. were the questions? Well, do you, do you love Superman as much as I do? Was, okay. And Batman is what I, the second question. And the third was, were you ever tempted to see it without me? So okay. When it I comes, think you answered those. When it comes to Batman, I have to say I probably love him less than you do. Superman is up there. He's way up there in my estimation. Batman, like when the first, those Michael Keaton Batman movies came out, I was just like, why is everybody so crazy? 
all these people wearing Batman t-shirts to school. I don't understand. I don't get it. You know, I was, I was on the football team. I was too cool for that. So I maybe had Batman had a big movie like Superman in the eighties instead of, or I guess I need to say the early eighties <laughs> instead of the nineties. Like he did, I would have, I would have loved him much more. Before that, my experience with Batman was the friggin' Adam West TV show. And I did not get that. I looked at that and I was like, that is shit. It's, it's cheesy and terrible. And I knew a kid, uh, he was younger than me. I used to, <laughs> this is how sad my life was. <laughs> I had the fewest Star Wars toys of anybody I knew. But there was this kid that I knew. And he was probably like two or three years younger than me. And, you know, when you're like eight or nine or whatever, that's a big difference but anyways I would go and play with this kid's house anyways because he had every damn Star Wars toy in the on you know we had the whole back of the card every single one of them and he had like all the freaking vehicles and everything and his dad had even gone through and like using his carpenter skills made him like a Hoth playland with like caves in it and painted it all white and all this stuff so this guy's parents actually loved him <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding, Dad and Mom. I hope you never listen to my show because the time you would spend washing your ears out with soap would probably be a, a bad thing. But I know you loved me. I'm just kidding. Uh, anyways. Oh, gosh. Have I lost the train of my thought? I missed it. We go to this it guy's left house, the station. and I'm assuming oh, you okay. watched the Adam West right. Batman. Going back to that. This kid was only allowed... Uh, I mean, his parents loved him so much that they wouldn't let him just sit and watch TV all day like my kids did. I mean, my parents did, sorry. And so he was only allowed to watch one TV show a day. I, I would ask him, like, oh, yeah, you, you watch Transformers or whatever? You like that show? It's pretty cool. I saw the one the other day, and he's like, oh, I don't watch Transformers. I, don't, I only get to watch one TV show a day, so I choose to watch Batman. I was like, what the f***? <laughs> you watch that? I've seen that show, it sucks! Like, it's so fake and terrible! Batman climbs up the wall and he's just walking sideways. And they just turn the camera, it's so obvious. I didn't get it, you know, I have to admit. But this kid didn't get it either. This kid thought it was awesome. He thought Batman was rad because he would punch the guys and it would go pow, biff. He loved, you know, he thought that was awesome. And I've known a lot of people who said that they didn't get it. They were just like, oh, Batman is so rad. I used to watch that show when I was a kid and he was so awesome. And I didn't realize even that it was a comedy. Um, I didn't get that it was a comedy either. I wasn't old enough to understand what camp is. And to see that they were purposefully being cheesy. Which is something that I love now. I love doing campy things and cheesy things and I sometimes will make videos with my children where I purposefully make it really cheesy. I made a video where we had, you know, they run into a snow monster and we made just the worst, cheesiest snow monster costume out of like paper mache and streamers and stuff. But I love it because it's cheesy and silly and it's purposefully cheesy, which is cool. But yeah, I mean, as a kid, I did not get it. I didn't get it at all. And so Batman didn't appeal to me from what I knew. So I would say the first time that I ever really appreciated Batman had to be probably the Christopher Nolan movies. When I saw Batman Begins, I came out of that one and I was like, holy crap. If, you know, the old Batman movies, the Michael Keaton ones had been like this, dude, I would be a Batman fan. Yeah, that was the first time that I ever really appreciated Batman. I mean, I I think Batman's cool. You know, he's a societal icon, you know, a cultural icon. You can't not know that Batman's cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be, gravitate towards it. And I guess I just never gravitated toward Batman like I did Superman because of Christopher Reeve and the movies that he did. So that's my answer to Batman. Have I ever been tempted to sneak off? I have to admit, slightly. I remember when I watched, like, the second or third or fourth whatever trailer for that movie, when Wonder Woman shows up, I was like, ooh, that's cool. I want to see Wonder Woman. 
I like Wonder Woman. I like Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Leave me alone, kids. I'm thinking. <laughs> but, but, but a year from now, you and I can go see that Wonder Woman movie, and I won't feel like... Can you? Like a, what do you call it, somebody that... And I won't feel like isn't, a giant hypocrite. Isn't that a sequel to this movie, though? Can uh, well, How far if do they Zach have to Snyder go? Snyder is not involved. He's not part of I it. I think I will. But involved. isn't Christopher Nolan like the... The great and powerful Oz that's overseeing all of this stuff. Speaking think, of Wizard of Oz, I don't think he has anything to do with it. I, he doesn't anymore. I thought he I don't was think like he the. Cares about any of this stuff? He's never <laughs> cared about any of this stuff. Because there was, from what I had heard, you had Marvel, and they like we need somebody to oversee all this crap because it's getting out of hand. We need somebody that it, it kind of you know that cares about it. That's you know that can stop things from going awry if they're going awry and so Joss Whedon was that guy and he was like the executive producer of the Marvel Universe or something for two years yes. and at the same time more or less they did the same thing at Warner Brothers but they said Cole Christopher Nolan yeah him and he did the Dark Knight ones so yeah we want him we want millions and millions like he got us so let's put him in charge of all of that um, is that not the case? That I he wasn't don't believe really there's that? anybody at Warner Brothers that gives a crap about the these properties. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I we've talked about Kevin Feige is the head of Marvel Studios, and he loves those characters, and he knows them back and forth, and he considers them sacred in the same way that if you're listening to this show, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you consider something sacred, too, whether it's Star Wars or Batman or Spider-Man or, uh, I don't know, the Bible or something. You know, just any of those fables, you, <laughs> Noah, you, you might believe be Noah. in that stuff. It, 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 it's, it forms the core of who you are, and that's what Kevin Feige is. And I don't think there's anybody like that in a position of power at Warner Brothers. They're, they're, Jeff Johns is probably the best Joss Whedon that they've got, but you don't feel his influence on any of this stuff. Anyways. Yeah. So that's why I haven't seen those films. Transformers. And, and, dude, that's fine. And you and I have had a conversation in this exact same spot where I... I mean, I haven't seen any of the Transformers except actually, the we first Actually, we were parked three either. spots over. <laughs> but those <laughs> movies actually went down from that first one in 2007. And I told you about how I felt when I saw the clip of Optimus Prime murdering that other Autobot. It, it bugged me in a way that should not have bothered me. You know what I mean? Because it's, I know Optimus Prime isn't real yeah. and all that stuff, but it bothered me so bad because A, these guys did not get who Optimus Prime was, and B, why would you ever take a character like that who stands for righteousness and nobility and decency and optimism? It's in his effing name, Optimism guys, Prime. And turn him into just a an asshole just a, a normal person with the failings that that, that snaps and, and and murders a guy who's pleading for him to have mercy i can't ever unsee that clip that i saw and other people are just like hey, hey well who cares it's all you know just a toy <laughs> yeah everybody always tries to say that about the transformer is just a toy you know what i mean your mom who died was just a person uh, hey, hey it's just a person everything is just something but if you love that thing and it means something to you, then you, you get there, there needs to be some kind of respect. And the same thing with Superman. If And I'm blaming Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder was a nice man. I met him at a Comic-Con just a few years ago, and he talked to me for a while, and I got an autograph from him. And I was like, wow, this is a cool guy, man. This is really neat. But he does not get Superman. He does not appreciate Superman. He's the wrong guy to be given the responsibility of bringing Superman to the big screen. Anybody who thinks that this character is boring or that goodness is boring or being a Boy Scout is lame should not be anywhere near the property of Superman. Yeah, and I think I saw a thing uh, just the other day where they said that, like, back two years before Man of Steel uh, went into production or something, somebody interviewed Zack Snyder and asked him if he would ever want to do a Superman movie. And he's like, no. Superman's boring. He's just, he's got no depth to his character. Blah blah blah. And then two years later, he signed on, and he's like, "Oh yeah, Superman, I love him. 
uh, how many zeros on that? Yeah, I love him. <laughs> but yeah, Zach's, uh, the, that, the point I was making is I blame Snyder. And you can blame David Goyer because he's the comic book fan and his name is on that first script. But he also wrote The Dark Knight. And <laughs> so I can't really blame David Goyer. You know what I mean? We know this guy gets superhero films. And yeah, okay, they tried to make Superman much more like The Dark Knight and stuff, and that just doesn't work. But with this sequel, it seems like, and you had said, well, maybe they learned from our, their mistakes. Maybe, And, and it, it seemed like that's what they were doing. Because the whole second movie was going to be, you know, Superman and Zod had this great battle and a bunch of people died and Superman's going to have to learn. Or he has learned from this mistake, this huge mistake, when the populace turns against him, when Batman turns against him, that human lives matter, that people need to be protected, that they need a savior, they need somebody that will think of them before he thinks of himself. That's what I thought they were doing in this sequel. But no, it's as though they made a mistake and rather than acknowledging that mistake, they decided to go all in, you know, in in gambling on that mistake. And say, you know what? No, we're going to embrace that, and we're going to have that be the whole backbone. I mean, I've just, I've talked to so many people that saw this movie, and they'll give me quotes. And a year ago, I would have said, "There's no way Superman would say that in a movie." <laughs> you know, where, you know, he's like, "I ought to tear your head." And, and and you know, fake Sean Connery saying, "You know, we, you know, use your heat vision to burn off their genitals and stuff like that," was a direct response to. The stuff that 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 Superman says in this that he said in the trailer, and stuff, <laughs> um, because there is an old fashionedness to Superman and a, a decency that most people don't have anymore, and that is the whole basis of this guy's personality. If you don't get that, you that he is inherently good then you don't get Superman. They, you know what I'm saying? Where was where does David Goyer come from and Zack Snyder? Are they... Uh, Goyer wrote the Blade films. No, no, I he mean, dra- where where did, where did they grow up? Do you know? Goyer, I don't know, New York Jew is my guess. Okay, so that might be one of the biggest problems. But because Superman, Superman was created by New York Jews. Well, true, but I'm just saying Superman is Midwest values. He's Smallville, Kansas. Okay. Uh, you know, personified, and somebody from Chicago or somebody from New York is going to be like, "The hell, that's flyover country." I don't know even. There, there is. There, there's people there. I don't. No, sorry. Okay, so that that's a that's helicopter. a possibility. Yeah, there's a line of them. There's another. Is one there coming. a line of them? Uh-oh. That's really weird. They're it's coming like to uh, to, to fight Superman. More more army guys that Superman can kill. Um, but Superman's core is that he grew up in America's heartland with a good father and a good mother that taught him and this is so politically incorrect but I'm going to say it anyway traditional American values that's what he that's why he is the man that he is as Clark Kent you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. with Jonathan and Martha Kent who were such decent people that they brought up this god to be, you know, the most humble a person can be, who is a farmer, who somebody works in the ground, in the earth, works around animals, that works, you know, the sweat by the sweat of his brow, and he creates food and for other people. <laughs> it's it's a, an antiquated notion, but that's the bedrock of who this guy is. And I remember that very first Man of Steel trailer with Kevin Costner doing the, you know, maybe when Clark says, you know, should I have let them drown? And I, it just holy crap! It it was it flew in the face of who Pa Kent was, and you know there was a trailer for Dawn of Justice where Ma Kent and maybe I've said this on the air, air and if so I'm sorry you're listening to a, a rerun. But Ma, <laughs> anytime we talk about Man of Steel, it's a rerun. Ma, and so this is a trailer for the sequel where Ma Kent says, "You have the power, the ability to inspire people." and protect people, and be their hero. But remember, Clark, or son, or Carl, you don't owe them anything. And it was just like, oh my gosh, dude! 
Now Ma Kent is one of those? <laughs> and again, it's just like that. If you don't get that, if you got that so wrong, then how can you be expected to make a Superman? All of a sudden, is... Clark Kent turns into Kevin McCarthy and he's just like, ah, run and hide. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> They're here already. You're next. <laughs> Look it up, guys. That's a that's Big did a, an obscure pop culture reference from 1956 there, guys. And, and I'm proud of him for it. <laughs> anyway, a Batman is, is much more grayer. Because there are tons of different interpretations of Batman. Uh, there have been Boy Scouty Batmans. There have been, you know, like <laughs> really schmaltzy, stupid, campy Batman. There have been the gritty, grim Frank Miller, I am the night Batmans. And, and so you can interpret him in a number of different ways. It's like, where's the detonator? You wouldn't have given it to a normal citizen. That's a valid interpretation of Batman because there are so many ways he can be seen. He's a mentally ill person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Superman's not like that. There is one way to do Superman because, uh, you know, that that's been a constant and uh, apparently, and I didn't see the movie, I, I talked to my friend's son's girlfriend. <laughs> Jeff's oldest son okay. has a girlfriend, and she saw it, and I was like, oh, yeah, how, how did you like it? And she's like, well, it was all right, but I'll tell you one thing, it sure makes you hate Batman. And I was just like, whoa, and Jeff stood up, and he's like, well... I guess we made the right decision not going to see that. Because <laughs> Jeff loves Batman. And it, whether that's true or not, because all the accounts that I have read... Because you can't say, trust some teenage girl. I Can you? No. No. I, but all the accounts I've read <laughs> say it's way more skewed in Batman's favor. And Superman is the alien, and Superman is the guy with the chip on his shoulder, and Batman, you know, is the... The Savior. guy who's brought himself up from his bootstraps trying to protect people and all that. And so you, if you're going to hate somebody, you're going to hate Superman. But the way to do a movie like this is not to hate either of them. There are, there are probably a billion Superman fans on the face of the earth and a billion Batman fans on the face of the earth. And you don't want to alienate one of those groups. Now, I don't know. There's probably no Chinese Batman or Superman fans and it seems like China is the target now. This that, that's that's who we want to please. And I guess I understand that because it's the great untapped, you know. Yeah, have you heard of billion that? and a half people that you can... heard of that movie, The Mermaid? I have not. It's a Chinese movie, and it's the biggest money. It's made like five hundred million dollars. I don't know if there's... So about half of what Force of Bacon's made in the United <laughs> States. Right, but th this happened basically... Not, none of it happened in the United States. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of money for... I know, and, that, and that's great. ...foreign film, if you know what I'm saying. It is, yeah. It's, it's, it's great and all that stuff. So but, that's China but for you. China it's coming is what up. everybody really, really wants, despite what I just said about Force Awakens. Anyhow, uh, the way to make these movies is to have them both have good points to their argument. Have there be reasonable uh, motivation for them to fight, for them to despise one another if they despise one another, and reasonable reasons to put their differences aside and fight side by side. Not that Batman suddenly realizes that he, his mother and Superman's mother had the same name. I mean, when I first heard that, I was like, ha, 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 that's funny. Yeah, it, you had never noticed that they both were named Martha. That was a big name back in the 30s. But then people would say it over and over and over again until it's like, that wasn't a joke? That's actually the reason that they... Are you serious? <sighs> um, and at this point, nothing should surprise me. <laughs> but it, it, it does because it... Okay, making a movie that introduces all these characters and pits them against each other and stuff would be hard. But it shouldn't be so hard that they get it that wrong. The Avengers had all the Avengers fight each other before they came together as a team. And it was done really successfully. And everybody loved it. And the Avengers has a good score on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, it's what, not a 19. What you want to do, and what Avengers did, is if you would not seen the Thor movies, you're like, wow, this Thor guy is really cool, or Loki is really interesting, I want to see the Thor movies. Or, you know, 
we got to see a little bit of Black Widow's development and stuff like that in this movie. And you're like, wow, I want to see a movie about her. That's really interesting. It's like, oh, I thought Captain America would be boring, but now I'm going to go out and see that movie. You want to please the fans of these characters and introduce these characters to new fans. And you don't do that by, you know, just throwing out what makes these characters good <laughs> or or likable. Likable is a big thing. I mean, I understand anti-heroes. I understand, you know, taking not a, somebody that not has everybody's flaws. everybody's an anti-hero is the thing. But to make them villainous. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. that, uh, when we're recording this, Captain America 3 Civil War is just about to come out. And I have been a little worried about how they will make the other side, the non-Captain America side, reasonable. Do you know what I mean? For example, Black Widow goes to Tony's side and fights against Captain America. And I was like, but doesn't that fly in the face of everything we've seen with that character of Black Widow? But I trust the filmmakers enough to say, well, there's got to be a reason. I'm looking forward to finding out the reason. And I'll be disappointed if there isn't one. If there's just an arbitrary, well, I like Tony now. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, I'll be disappointed about that. But so far, they've not given me any reason to believe that they'll do that. That they'll be so shallow as to say, oh, well, everybody's got to draw a line in the sand. And despite having all these adventures alongside this man and knowing that he's a good man... I'm going to fight him. Anyhow, speaking, I, I, we've speaking been talking of that, a, we've been talking a long time, and I, I want to, are we going to finish up now? I, mean, I was going should. to, yeah. When, when you looked at it, I was like, oh, shoot, I've been talking. And now I'm talking about Civil War. Yeah. And, and but I'm, they're similar, aren't they? I would Superman like to end Superman versus Batman, Captain America versus Iron Man, and they're coming out within two <laughs> months of each other. They're very similar, but also there are characters that are very similar. Everybody calls Iron Man the Marvel version of Batman because he's a guy he's just a guy he doesn't have superpowers he has a high tech suit that makes him awesome he you know he's really smart he can invent things that help him out and Batman has all his little gadgets that help him do he's got his Batmobile and he's got his bat wing and his his batarang and his uh, his shark repellent bat spray bat nipples and then people also talk about Captain America as being Marvel's Superman because he's that guy. He's the Boy Scout. He is somebody with the antiquated, outdated values. Guy that's from the 40s, got frozen in ice and came back out. That's uh, something that I've seen mentioned in a lot of talk about this Superman movie and Man of Steel as well, is how Marvel got that right. And DC just did not. They they fell on their face when it came to that character. They're basically the same guy, but in Marvel's case, they stuck to it. Captain America was going to be Captain America. He was going to be from the 40s. He was going to have those values, and it was going to make him stand out, and it was going to make him somebody special, and it was going to make him somebody to root for and somebody that you can love and somebody that's cute and quaint, and, you know, he'll complain about somebody's language in the middle of a battle or something like that. And that's kind of sad when you think about it that the best Superman movie in the last 20 years was Captain America. That's all I got. No, no, and that's fine. And I'm going to finish up going back to what I said at the very beginning. I used the word schadenfreude. I was pleased when people didn't like it. But then I thought about the people who love these characters, who love these characters more than I do. They're out there. And I felt sorry for them. I felt <laughs> bad because they don't deserve this. They don't deserve somebody, you know, essentially spitting on the properties that, that, they, that, that mean so much to them. In the same way that if you were a little boy who idolized Optimus Prime and then you saw <laughs> that scene from, I think it's the third one, Dark of the Moon... I think about that kid and seeing that and that's his hero and and I feel bad. That kid doesn't deserve that. When I lived in LA, my buddy Matthew came over and he had seen the 
Tim Burton Planet of the Apes, and I hadn't seen it. I was too poor to <laughs> to go see it, but I had heard, you know, how it ended and, and that it had Marky Mark in it, and that's really all I needed to hear. <laughs> but I said, I have the 1968 Planet of the Apes. Do you want to watch it? And and we watched it together. And at the end of that movie, he said, Wow, oh, it is so unfair that people then had this movie and we've got, my generation has the Tim Burton one. Oh, it's not fair. And I, it, it, that stuck with me all these years later because it's just like, you're right. Yeah, you, you, your generation doesn't deserve that bad movie, that bad version of it. And I feel bad for the people who had a lot of emotional investment in this movie and then either have to lie to themselves and say, well, this was good and this was really good and, and, and oh, and there's this one scene or, you know what I mean? Or that are just heartbroken about it and it's like, oh, you know, I, I was so excited and I, you know, I bought all the toys and et cetera, et cetera. And now, <laughs> oh, geez, we've all been there. I mean, it's something that everybody experiences, whether you're a sports fan like you were and you're the team that you love completely botches the playoffs or the, or you yeah. know or whatever it they is they go to the NFC championship and then miss the field goal that would have won the game exactly it, and yet and it's just like oh, yeah. oh oh because you it wasn't just a game to you yeah that happened you had it your sense of self-worth and was riding on that game uh, your your civic pride of my city and all that stuff yeah, that's it's, how it's been 17 years and I still cry about it Okay, well, if you're not being facetious, I'm, I'm being, sorry, that's a word I'm I don't try to use. serious. But if you're not um, taking the piss with me, then you know exactly what I'm saying. Um, they did this series on NFL films. They did a whole series about all the teams that won the Super Bowl. And then after they'd done all of them, they went back and did this series called Missing Rings. And it was those teams that should have won it all. But they didn't quite make it, you know. Didn't we almost have it all? And they did my, my team. And I went, oh, I, I got it. Because I remembered that year so fondly, except for, of course, that last game. And so I went and I watched it. And, oh, when they got to that part, it was like getting kicked in the stomach all over again. I was just like, wow. Why did I watch this? Oh, why did I even put myself through this? This is the worst. And see, if you're not a sports fan and you're not a comic book fan and you're not a movie fan, you still have something like that. Because everybody goes through it. And if you haven't, you will. Because that's how everybody's life ends, with that big <laughs> kick in the stomach. So, spoiler alert, it's coming. And so I feel bad for the people and I feel a little bit bad that I was pleased at the huge drop off and I was pleased at the 19% Rotten Tomatoes and all that stuff. And yes, okay, so there's the the, the sad Affleck internet meme, <laughs> which I watched three or four times and, and people would link me to it and they would share it and it's like, check this out. And I love Ben Affleck. And from what I've heard... He tried his darndest in this movie. And some of the best parts of the movie were him trying his darndest. And just to see his face uh, during that interview. I, and I wish that there was one without the Simon and Garfunkel so you could actually hear what <laughs> the interviewer says. Because he's reading actual reviews. You know, where it's just like, you know, Superman, Batman, Dawn of Justice is a huge dawn of boredom. And, you know, it's just like all these... these <laughs> is a just giant headlines. steaming turd. That, yeah. And it's like Batman V audiences everywhere, you know, and, and, and stuff. Because, you know, it's, it was kind of a mean question to ask. <laughs> and Henry Cavill is just like, oh, well, listen, that, you know, we only care what the fans say. And, you know, and plus, we had the biggest opening ever. And, uh, but Affleck's not buying any of it. He's just... You know, we worked our asses off for nine, nine months on that or whatever. And, and I just, I feel bad for him because there are people that worked hard on this movie. And there are people for, that for them, that's, that's their Star Wars. That's their Optimus Prime. That's their whatever it is. And it hurts when they miss that field goal that the whole game is riding on. 
the guy hadn't missed a field goal or an extra point the entire year. That was the first one that he missed the entire year. Well, okay. <clears throat> Sorry. I mean, if it were Columbia, they would have had someone waiting with a gun in the airport. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, and, and here's the thing is I've been talking for an hour. I could continue to talk for an hour because I wanted to talk about, well, if you're Warner Brothers, what do you do? And yeah. what do you do with all these other movies that are coming down the pike? First, you got Suicide Squad. Then you got Wonder Woman. Then you got Justice League. Then you got Aquaman. Then you got Justice League 2. And all these things, they've already got release dates. They've already got directors and screenwriters and production teams and, and post-production and costumes and all that stuff. And it's a good question. If yeah, you're that's... Warner Brothers and your movie that should have already crossed the $2 billion mark, hasn't even made a billion dollars and won't make a billion dollars, despite having the most famous superheroes in the world together for the first time. Do you rethink everything? Do you say, oh gosh, guys, we got to put on the brakes. We have to analyze why this did this. You know, our, our people were saying that we would have Force Awakens numbers on this movie. And, and it, you know, it dropped 71% the second weekend, or, you know, 69 or something like that. 69, dude. Yeah, that's one thing I was wondering. I mean, you were being ashamed of your schadenfreude because of what those people that love Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman or Aquaman or... Cyborg or Flash. Cyborg or... or Green Lantern. Green Lantern or Red Tornado or... Wait, what? Know, it's... There's, there's nobody out there that loves Red Tornado. It's, nobody. Okay. <laughs> Hey, my son's favorite comic book character is Moon Knight right now, okay? Somebody loves Red Tornado. Oh, boy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Should he use those, you, you feel bad about those people, but what about the progress that could come of this? They're, they were going down the freaking wrong street. They turned down like a dead-end alley, and they were headed full speed towards the friggin' wall. Maybe now they can put on the brakes and back out of the alley and realize they took the wrong turn and go the right way because of this. But will they? I don't know and that they will. I've asked everybody, I, anybody who knows anything about business and stuff, I ask them, if it were you, what would you do? Because holy cow, Batman v Superman cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it will make its money back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's right. not... It's it's rare for a movie to lose money because they have video and they have on demand, yeah. they have streaming and they have so all that many stuff. windows. But it's going to be a little while before it makes its money back. And that should give you pause and say what 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 went wrong and can we avoid that on the because there's no way they're going to say, well, we'll we'll pull back on the budget for Justice League or, you know, we've got. Zack Snyder directing Justice League, maybe we should rethink that. You know what I'm saying? It's like I, if I, if it were me, if I were Warner Brothers, what would I do? And it's a hard question to answer because they have all of these release dates, and they have to be working on something right now for it to come out next October. Right. Or you know, Wonder Woman is Wonder done Woman is, yeah, shooting it's... for it to come out next June. You know, or whenever it comes out, and. Suicide Squad is kind of done, but they they halted and got everybody back and did some reshoots, and maybe they were always going to do some reshoots. But it's awfully suspicious if immediately after Batman v Superman, they say, oh, hey, everybody, uh, Will, we're going to need you to shave your head again. <laughs> that, that to me, seems indicative of, oh, you know, we learned a couple of things. <laughs> You're going to be able to tell which ones are the reshoots because it's when he's got the bald cap on. <laughs> It's like, uh, it's like what's her face? Four, yeah, well, she's yeah. got the wig instead of actually dyed her hair. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope it does some good somehow. That that it shows them that they they don't understand their characters. They need to get somebody in there that does. Hopefully, that's what will happen. I guess you know, time will tell. We'll see. Maybe they'll look at Deadpool and see. Maybe they'll, I don't know if they can learn a lesson from Deadpool for, for that, but at the very least, they can look at um, Captain America, uh, Avengers, those kind of movies, and what, uh, what they did, and the lessons that you learn from those. I don't know. Hopefully, somehow, they can find a way 
to make things right because of this. At the very least, the bad reviews and the poor box office numbers should, you know, make them go home and rethink their life. They don't <laughs> want to sell me death sticks. I, I guess that's all we've got to say. I hope if you listen to all of this episode that you are uh, glad that we talked about it. Um, may, if you feel <laughs> I don't know that betrayed this... that we didn't go see the movie, I I don't know. I mean, I, I've talked for an hour explaining why <laughs> I didn't go see the movie. I can't make myself more clear except for to say, well, go back 45 minutes and, and, and just listen to that <laughs> listen part again. again. So unfortunately, I'm sure for Chris, this is not the episode he was hoping for. But maybe for Chris, this is the field goal getting lost. <laughs> yeah, it, it possibly could be. But uh, hopefully he still enjoyed the episode. And uh, we'll come back next time <laughs> when we're talking about something that we actually have seen. But yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rashad Field. And uh, let justice dawn. I, 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 I got nothing, guys. I'm sorry. I'm still thinking about that. That's Margo about Robbie. as worthwhile as the uh, actual title itself. That terrible play on the title. All right, folks. See you later. Good night. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. This show is lame. As lame as Rish Outfield. If you were a little boy who idolized Optimus Prime and then you saw that scene from, I think it's the third one, Dark of the Moon. Oh, yeah, I love that. That's the one that, uh, that has that... Shoot, now I can't think of the song. <laughs> Just say Comfortably Numb. Okay. That's the one that has that Comfortably Numb song on it, doesn't it? You know, one thing I've noticed, they have those Suicide Squad trailers, right? Mm -hmm. And on the Suicide Squad trailers... They used Bohemian Rhapsody, and there's a new one that just came out. Yeah, I saw with the cousin. ballroom blitz on yep. it. It seems like they the what they learned their lesson for, at least as far as advertising goes, is they watched the uh, Guardians of the Guardians Galaxy. of the Galaxy trailers and saw just how well. And <clears> see, they've done everything they can in the the recent trailers for Suicide Squad to make it look fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Will Smith's part has gotten smaller and smaller, and Margot Robbie's part <laughs> is just, she's all over yeah. that trailer. And and rightly so, because everybody who's under a certain age loves Harley Quinn. Plus, she's Margot fucking Robbie. Yeah. Plus, they seem to have given her all the fun, the most enjoyable lines, and you know, that part where she's like, don't you get it? We're bad guys. Oh my gosh. When I saw that, I was like, I'm going to see that movie. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? In the uh -huh. same way that in Guardians of the Galaxy, where they said they call themselves the Guardians of the... What a bunch of a-holes. I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to see this movie. <laughs> okay, back to the story. Stay. Bark, bark, quack, tail. Good boy. Good boy. Uh, really big? Seriously? <laughs>